Aloha. I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD from Out of the Doldrums. Let's get right into it. Photobiomodulation, also known as infrared light therapy, red light therapy, low level light therapy, or LLLT. All different names for the exact same thing. What on earth is it? And is there some science behind it or is it all a big scam? It seems that photobiomodulation is gaining in popularity. There's so many claims that it can help with almost every condition under the sun. Is there any truth to this? Let's start with what it is. Photobiomodulation is defined as, quote, any of several therapeutic techniques that employ low level laser or LED light to relieve pain or heal wounds, end quote. That's the original definition. Basically, photobiomodulation involves exposing cells or tissue to low levels of red and near-infrared light. It's light exposure that's at a very specific wavelength and also at a very specific energy density. When we review different wavelengths of light on the light spectrum, we have three categories, ultraviolet, visible, and infrared light. We can see the ultraviolet light is on the short wavelength end of the spectrum. It's also considered ionizing light. Ionizing light can cause cell damage, which can result in cancer or cell death. At the other end of the spectrum, though, is infrared and near-infrared light. This type of light is non-ionizing, meaning it does not cause cell damage and DNA changes that are dangerous to overall cellular health. Each different type of light and wavelength of light appears to penetrate the skin at different depths. Scientists have found that near-infrared and infrared seems to penetrate the skin at the most depth. Because of this, most photobiomodulation therapy occurs at a wavelength of 625 to 880 nanometers. This particular light exposure has a wide range of effects at the molecular, cellular, and tissue levels. Within the cell, there's very strong evidence suggesting that this light exposure acts on mitochondria to increase ATP production, modulate reactive oxygen species, cause the release of nitric oxide, and create certain transcription factors that are beneficial for health. If we were to simplify it, photobiomodulation acts by creating a phytochemical reaction in the cell, which is beneficial when it comes to rejuvenation and cellular or mitochondrial health. This could result in overall improvements in body health and function. Let's quickly review the history of photobiomodulation. After the discovery of lasers in the 1960s, it was discovered kind of by accident that lasers could have beneficial effects on certain health parameters. Lasers? <laughs> Let's go back to the year 1967 in Semmelweis Medical University in Hungary. A scientist by the name of Andre Meister was trying to repeat an experiment that was just conducted by Harvard, where a ruby laser was used to cure malignant tumors in rats. Ruby laser? Unbeknownst to him, his laser was less powerful than the Harvard laser, and when he tried to duplicate the experiment, it didn't cure the malignant tumors. He did, however, notice that his laser improved wound healing in his rats, and he also noticed a heightened rate of hair growth in the treated areas. And with that discovery, the field of photobiomodulation was born. Soon afterwards, Mester applied his findings to human patients. He started using lasers to treat patients that had non-healing skin ulcers, and he seemed to have good results. Nowadays, we know that in addition to lasers, specific LED lights also seem to perform equally well. Photobiomodulation has evolved into a therapeutic procedure that's now used in three main ways. One, to reduce inflammation, edema, and improve chronic joint disorders. Two, to promote healing of wounds, deeper tissues, and nerves. Three, to treat neurological disorders and pain. So what are some conditions that could potentially be treated with photobiomodulation? Well, skin rejuvenation, wound healing, alopecia or hair loss. There's something called transcranial photobiomodulation for treatment after a traumatic brain injury, stroke, and for prevention and slowing down cognitive decline and possibly even Alzheimer's disease. Mitigating the side effects of cancer therapy like radiation and chemotherapy is another use of photobiomodulation. Let's hit the key highlights when it comes to treating these conditions with photobiomodulation. Probably one of the most common uses is skin rejuvenation. As we age, so inevitably does our skin. When our skin ages, we experience thinning of both the dermis and epidermis, which are layers of our skin, 
and we see a decline in synthesis of type 1 collagen. We also experience a loss of tone and elasticity of our skin, which is caused by fragmentation of collagen, elastin, and other important structures in our skin. We also see changes in pigmentation or coloring. Environmental exposures are very important when it comes to skin aging. Photo damage, like exposure to UV light, seems to be one of the most important causes of skin aging. Multiple studies have demonstrated improvement in facial wrinkles due to aging when exposure to photobiomodulation happens. For example, this study harvested skin samples from six volunteers after exposure to LED phototherapy at 633 nanometers. The volunteers underwent 18 sessions over eight weeks at 94 joules per centimeter squared. The skin samples showed that there was an increased number in dermal fibroblasts, mitochondria, and increased metabolic activity within the fibroblast after treatment. Another study similarly exposed subjects to LED phototherapy at 830 nanometers, 630 nanometers, or both for 20 minutes twice per week. They found that this effect persisted for up to 12 weeks after stopping the therapy. Clinically, they found this meant reduced wrinkles and improved skin elasticity. This is great news. Basically, all this data suggests that red and near-infrared light promoted skin rejuvenation. There's other skin disorders too that can benefit from photobiomodulation, including psoriasis, a condition called vitiligo, facial blemishes, as well as scarring secondary to acne vulgaris. There's also evidence that photobiomodulation can improve scarring after surgery. And it also can decrease keloid scarring, those really raised dark scars after surgery. Lastly, there's some preliminary studies showing that 660 nanometer near infrared light treatments can enhance skin resistance prior to upcoming UV light exposure. This would mean LED based therapy prior to UV exposure, like being in the sun, can provide significant protection against UV related skin damage and sunburn. One particular study found a sun protection factor or SPF 15 like effect from 660 nanometer LED based therapy. The hypothesis behind this is that the infrared light prepares cells to resist and or repair further UV induced DNA damage. Very interesting. Let's move on to wound healing. There's multiple studies in the literature describing photobiomodulation and enhanced wound healing. In humans, a trial was done where wounds were treated with an 820 nanometer, eight joules per second laser, and there was enhanced wound healing seen. What was really interesting about this study though, is the researchers created wounds in different areas so they could have a control wound to compare it to. They found the untreated wounds, the control wounds, which were far away from the treated wounds, also had enhanced wound healing. Researchers concluded that the red light therapy may not only affect the immediate treatment area, it may have distant or systemic wide effects. Other studies have demonstrated enhanced healing of bony and soft tissue defects in the mouth. There's also some evidence showing photobiomodulation could enhance healing of scars and burns. In particular, there's some studies demonstrating that this therapy could reduce the severity of burns caused by radiation cancer therapy. What about hair loss or androgenic alopecia? One of the most commercially successful applications of photobiomodulation is the stimulation of hair regrowth. Studies have shown that photobiomodulation can cause more hair follicles to move from the telogen phase into the antigen phase, meaning more hair is in that active growth phase. The newly formed hair is also found to be thicker and it's more pigmented. A meta-analysis reviewed 11 randomized controlled trials covering 667 subjects. These trials looked at both comb devices and caps that can be worn to deliver the treatment. The trials demonstrated that photobiomodulation was effective in improving hair density and hair thickness with minimal side effects. One interesting thing is that a low frequency of treatment, meaning less than 60 minutes per week, seemed to work way better than daily treatment. Let's move on to transcranial photobiomodulation. It seems crazy, I know, but near infrared light, a wavelength of 800 to 1100 nanometers can penetrate the skull and it can reach the brain. Near infrared light is absorbed by cytochrome C oxidase in the mitochondria. As a result, this seems to increase blood flow, energy, neural protection, and brain repair. There's also increased nitric oxide being released by this light. All of this appears to decrease inflammation in the brain. 
Because of this, photobiomodulation is being considered a viable treatment for serious neurological conditions, such as traumatic brain injury, stroke, spinal cord injury, and neurodegenerative diseases like dementia. For example, transcranial treatment has been shown to have a noticeable effect on acute human stroke patients. One study showed significantly greater improvement five days after photobiomodulation treatment compared to a sham treatment. This difference persisted up to 90 days after the stroke, and researchers noted 70% of patients treated had a successful outcome compared to 51% of the control patients. A second trial in 660 patients confirmed this, but they found that the beneficial results were seen in moderate and moderate to severe stroke patients, but not in the severe stroke patients. Researchers have tried to pinpoint why the results are so good when it comes to stroke and brain injury. As expected, they found increased mitochondrial activity in the treated brain cells, and they hypothesized that because of this, there was increased ATP production, and this was at least partly responsible for the improvements seen. What about traumatic brain injury? Many people who suffer from severe or even moderate traumatic brain injury have very long-lasting and even life-changing health issues like headaches, cognitive impairment, difficulty sleeping, and more. This can prevent them from working or living any sort of normal life. There's plenty of studies and animal studies demonstrating that photobiomodulation can decrease the severity and improve recovery after traumatic brain injury. One of the leaders in this field of research is Margaret Naser from Boston University. She studied multiple applications of photobiomodulation in TBI patients, and she's seen some improvement. The first case study reported longer concentration, better memory, and improved math skills after undergoing photobiomodulation with an LED light source of 660 nanometers and 830 nanometers red light therapy at a power density of 22.2 milliwatts per centimeter squared. She repeated this experiment in more patients and has consistently demonstrated that photobiomodulation improves neuropsychological testing after traumatic brain injury and also improves sleep and PTSD symptoms. There's no doubt that more studies are needed on this, but the preliminary data is pretty impressive. Lastly, let's quickly touch on photobiomodulation for treatment of cognitive decline and maybe even Alzheimer's disease. I'll start by saying the research in this area is very preliminary. Alzheimer's disease is linked to the formation of beta amyloid plaque and tau protein in the brain. There's quite a few animal studies that demonstrate that transcranial photobiomodulation reduces that beta amyloid plaque in the brain of mice that have Alzheimer's disease. Despite the many animal studies, there's only a few studies involving humans. Researchers in 2017 reported a case series of five patients with Alzheimer's dementia who were given transcranial photobiomodulation therapy. Those subjects did show cognitive improvement and better emotional control after a four-week treatment period. A follow-up study in 2019 done on eight study patients with dementia found increased cerebral perfusion, so increased blood flow in all eight participants after 12 weeks of therapy. These studies are really encouraging, but we definitely need more research, especially larger studies in randomized controlled trials with placebo controls. Okay, so we've reviewed the basics in regards to photobiomodulation and infrared light therapy. Is it a scam or is it legit? Photobiomodulation is now used in the treatment of many ailments as we discussed before, but it does remain controversial for a couple of reasons. First, we don't fully understand the cellular mechanisms of how it works. This is getting better day by day as scientists are truly taking the time to investigate how light therapy works on a cellular and molecular level. Second, there's large variation in the studies that have been done. Each study has a different parameter that they use, different lights, sometimes a laser, sometimes an LED light, different wavelengths, different power densities, different timing, different treatment protocols. It's no wonder some studies show great results and other studies show no useful results. It would be nice to standardize treatment parameters to better evaluate what works best and what doesn't work at all. One interesting thing, for example, that we're finding is sometimes lower doses of light are more beneficial than higher doses. So we really need to figure out what treatment protocols, what doses and wavelengths work best for what conditions. 
One thing that we do know is that there is an almost complete lack of side effects reported in any of the studies. So we can rest easy that this light therapy is safe without immediate side effects. So at the end of the day, is photobiomodulation a scam or is it legit? If you would have asked me five or 10 years ago, I would have said definitely a scam. We just didn't have enough science and well done studies behind it. Now we've got much more research, which is very promising. So while I do feel that it's legit, we definitely need more quality science to back it up. All right, it's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this overview video on photobiomodulation, summarizing what we know about it so far. It's definitely something I'm gonna keep my eye on in the future, and I hope you do too. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video. If you're very interested, I've linked some of the key references below, so feel free to peruse all that literature in detail. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and aloha.